Welcome back to Wood Acres. It's early February and it's still a little bit too cold to be planting outside, but I want to be productive because spring is coming up on us fast. I can already see the hellebores and the hyacinths and crocus popping through the ground. Hey puppy. So I want to stay productive and there's a lot of things that I'm trying to build this year. So I think today I'll be able to knock out one of my projects rather quickly. What I intend to build is a new bird feeder, specifically an Oriole feeder. I just saw one in one of the seed catalogs that I got and it's a pretty simple design. I figured I could build that. And whenever I get the urge to build something, I head to the shed to see what materials I have. Stick around to the end for some tips on how to attract Orioles to your backyard this season. I've actually been getting a lot of this miscellaneous wood organized so I know what I have to start building things. Today, I think I'm going to be using one of these shelving boards. And I think it's gonna be a perfect thickness for the feeder as well as a pretty good 12 inches width. So I can just start cutting slivers out of this and then use all the pieces and start making a bird feeder. Oh, Pop, you ready to work? Okay. All right, I'm gonna take this into the garage where it's a little bit warmer and I have all the tools ready. I'm not going to say which catalog it's out of, but I will show you the little photo they have. It's a pretty simple design, so I think I can build that instead of spending money on it. I already have, I believe, all the materials to make it. So I'm going to get started on this and see how it turns out. Pretty sure I messed it up but I'm pretty sure I can fix it. So this happens sometimes whenever I'm building out of just the picture in my head instead of taking any measurements. By the picture standards it looks like a feeder. It's got the reservoirs. I can put the two nails in which I have right here. Just put a nail in to hang the citrus off of and we're good to go. I even have one of the little eyelet hooks here that I'm going to screw into the top to hang to the tree and would be set. It'd work and uh, wouldn't have any problems, except it's not going to be the most sturdy thing if those triangles just perched there on the top there. So I looked at the picture of the actual feeder, and these triangles are supposed to be here. And if I put the triangles there, 
I'll be able to nail them into the side and they'll have a lot stronger support right there. So to do that though, as you'll see, it makes it wider. So I'm gonna have to remake my roof to be a little bit wider, which is no big deal. So I'm gonna do a little bit of rework here to make it a little stronger. That is looking a lot better. Not all the cuts are perfect and my 45 is a little janky, but once I get it painted, you won't even know that. And I don't think the birds are going to mind. I have the nails up in there that we can hang the citrus off of. And then the lids are down below for the jam or jelly, as well as maybe even mealworms or some other type of protein for the Orioles. Now, since it's for the Orioles, I'm probably going to go ahead and paint this a nice bright orange, just like all the other Oriole feeders. It does help draw them in because they are attracted to that color. I am actually going to take these lids off for now because it'll make painting it a lot easier. I don't have any orange paint on me right now, but once I get that, I'll paint this up, glue those lids back on, and it's ready to hang in the tree. All right, I actually picked up some paint, so I'm gonna get this bird feeder painted, and then afterwards I'll show you some tips on getting Orioles into your backyard. As a final addition, I added a little plastic container on top of the feeder. I screwed the hook through the container and then glued around the hook so this is something I can fill up with water and make a little moat. That'll keep the ants from crawling down the hook and onto the feeder for the sugary jelly. Now I have some tips here that you can use to try and attract Orioles into your backyard. The first tip is to get your feeder out early. The earlier the better. You don't want to miss the first flock of Orioles to fly over your property and not see any food. So late March, early April is a good time to get it out in my area, but it might change depending on where you are in the United States. It can take a couple weeks for them to find it, so make sure you get it out early and keep it stocked up. A second tip is to hang it where they can see it. You don't want it underneath the canopy of a tree. They're going to be flying above, so you want to be able to have it out in the open where they can see it from the sky. The height isn't super important, but keep it as high as you can while still being able to access it easily. You don't want to keep it too close to the ground where animals can get to it. You can also put it near a bird bath where they might be visiting anyway, and they'll be able to see the feeder from there. The third tip is they do love orange, not just the color, but they like the fruit as well. So you want to be putting orange slices out. Even grape slices will work too, but they do prefer the orange slices. They do like jams and jellies as well, so you want to have access to that. Grape is a very popular flavor, but they do enjoy a variety of fruits. You can also feed the same nectar that you feed the hummingbirds if you are feeding them as well, and 
you should be, but they can't use the same feeder as hummingbirds do. So you're going to need a specialized feeder for the Orioles because they have bigger beaks and not as long tongues as the hummingbirds. With all these choices, you do want to keep them fresh daily. You don't want to have them rotting out there on the feeder. Tip number four, in the late summer, you want to add some protein sources, some mealworms, dried or live. Other insects work as well too. You can put a suet cake out there for access as well as even peanut butter because they do need more protein sources going into the winter rather than the sugar and the carbs that they need for energy during the summer. A little bonus tip is they don't really prefer seeds unless they're already cracked. So stick with the sources of food that they do like and you have a better chance of bringing in some Orioles this season. You want to also make sure you always have fresh water on your property for all the different wildlife that might show up. It can take some time for an Oriole to find your feeder, so keep an eye out and keep the food fresh. If you want to see some more from Wood Acres, make sure you subscribe down below. Hit that like button before you leave. Outro. You can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching.